High Speed was a very popular pinball machine from the 1980s. In this video we'll look at some of the technology used in this machine. I'll briefly cover some of the history of this model and the restoration of this particular unit, but we'll mostly focus on the electronics inside, which is very typical of the pinball machines of the time. High Speed was an electronic pinball machine made by Williams Electronics and released in 1986. The game was noted for a number of firsts, including being the first pinball to play a complete song and the first Williams pinball game to use alphanumeric displays. The software was also the first to use auto percentaging for replay scores and the first to have a jackpot that carried over between games. Over 17,000 units of high speed were manufactured and it's credited as one of the games that helped revitalize the pinball industry which had become stagnant in the 1980s due in part to what became known as the North American video game crash of 1983. After sliding out the glass, the play field can be tilted up. Underneath the play field, the power comes in via a cord, which on this unit I replaced with a new heavy-duty extension cord. Power goes to the large transformer, which provides the various voltage needed by the power supply boards, which we'll look at shortly. The power switch is on the right underside of the unit. Power is also routed to a small box with a fused convenience outlet, which is handy when servicing the unit to power a light, vacuum, or soldering iron. At the bottom rear is one of the two speakers in the unit. On the left side is the sound volume control. Also here are two tilt switches. This one triggers on forward or backward movement and this one by movements like tipping the unit. There are flipper buttons on the right and left. Finally, the front door opens and contains the coin boxes. This unit has two which are set up to accept quarters. Also mounted on one of the coin boxes are these three switches which are used for diagnostics and programming. Looking at the underside of the play field you can see the wiring of the lamps, bumper switches and solenoids. There are no active components here, mostly some power resistors and a few diodes. One more tilt switch is located here. There's lots of point-to-point -point wiring and wires which connect back to the circuitry behind the display board. Much of the maintenance of a pinball machine, other than cleaning and removing coins, is replacing burnt-out bulbs. While early pinball machines use custom electronics, Later machines like this one used hardware that shared common components across machines. This unit was based on what Williams called their System 11. We'll look briefly at each of the circuit boards in the unit, which are all contained within the back box. Behind the display glass are the displays. These are of the vacuum fluorescent type and are mounted in what are called slave display boards. There are five similar display boards on this unit. The top two are alphanumeric with seven 14 segment displays. The middle two are numeric with seven seven segment displays. And the final one on the bottom is numeric with four seven segment displays and one in the center that can display a dot or a dash. This is used for indicating the ball in play and match number. The displays are of the common anode type and run on high voltage, plus or minus 100 volts, at low current. Also on the display board are numerous incandescent lamps which light up behind the display glass. The display board is hinged to provide access to the rest of the circuitry.
On the back of it is wiring, some power resistors, and ribbon cables that connect to the alphanumeric master display board. The master display board drives the displays, mostly consisting of the driver chips for the vacuum fluorescent displays, as well as some passive components, resistors and capacitors. It's needed because the CPU board cannot directly drive the high voltage displays. Wires run via Molex connectors to the power supply board and a ribbon cable runs to the CPU board. The remaining circuit boards are all located inside the back box. The power supply board converts the AC voltages from the power transformer to the various DC voltages needed for the lamps, solenoids, and 5 volt TTL logic circuitry. It's a simple analog power supply using rectifiers and Zener diodes, capacitors, and resistors. Transistors are used for regulation, as this predated the voltage regulator ICs that are common today. Several of the transistors are on heat sinks, including one large one which regulates the plus 5 volt power supply, which is rated at 6 amps. Many of the lamps use 6.3 volts AC directly from the power transformer. The flipper power supply is a small board which takes 48 volts AC from the power transformer, rectifies and smooths it, and drives three flippers via the two flipper switches. It has a large bridge rectifier and capacitor. This board is not fully populated with parts, indicating there were options that could be used on other pinball models. The board is stamped March 11, 1986. External to the board is a large 30,000 microfarad external electrolytic filter cap, full wave rectifiers, and some fuses. The background soundboard is for one of the more advanced features of the machine, the ability to play digital sounds. It has its own CPU, a Motorola 68B09E running at 2 MHz, 2 kilobytes of RAM, and firmware in EEPROM. Also on this board is a 6821 peripheral interface adapter and MC1408 digital to analog converter. The background soundboard can play various sounds under control of the CPU which it communicates with via the PIA. The board drives the two speakers. Background sounds are produced by this board, but music is produced on the main CPU board. The board is stamped March 31, 1986. The largest and most complex board is the CPU board. It has two 8-bit Motorola 68B02 CPUs running at 4 MHz. I believe one is used for generating music and the other the game logic and input output. Each CPU has two kilobytes of RAM and two EEPROMs. For I.O. the board has seven 6821 PIAs. Music is generated via 55536 continuously variable slope delta modulator chip. There are lots of miscellaneous TTL logic, mostly 74 LS series chips. Also lots of transistors that drive input outputs. One seven segment LED is used for power on diagnostics. Battery backup is provided by three non-rechargeable AA cells. Two push button switches allow for resetting each of the CPUs. There was no date stamp that I could find on the board, but the ICs on this and other boards have date codes ranging from 1984 to late 1985 in agreement with the stamps on the other boards that indicate a manufacture date of March 1986. Finally, at the top is a lamp and motor for the rotating police light, one of the special features of the machine. There's also a relay which drives a large solenoid that hits the top of the case to make a noise when you beat the high score. I purchased this unit from someone local here in Ottawa, Canada, who is no longer using it. It was mostly working when I received it. Restoration consisted of cleaning and lubricating it and replacing burnt out bulbs. I replaced the rusted leg bolts, installed a new kit of rubber parts and new balls. I installed a new plunger, line cord, and found a replacement for the missing stoplight. I did some touch up of the paint. I hope you found the technology in this old pinball machine interesting. 
You can learn more about High Speed and other pinball machines on various websites on the internet, both historical as well as restoration and technical information.